Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your bulletin announcement sheet, I ask you to please turn to that for a couple announcements here this morning. As we can see through the rest of the week, actually a pretty lean week, which is kind of typical over the summer months here at St. Paul's. Uh, nonetheless, we will be having ladies Bible study on Tuesday. We've had a little bit of a break due to me being gone on vacation, but we'll be getting back into things on Tuesday at 1030 for the ladies Bible study. Wednesday, men's Bible study will meet at 645. And then just a brief mention, uh, if you're going to be gone on the weekends, uh, as always, uh, try to make it out for Wednesday night for the midweek divine service with communion. That's at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. And then we can look to next week, elders meeting next week as well. Some information on the very back, I ask you to please uh, pay special attention to that with the safety committee, as well as Vacation Bible School that will be coming up in August as well. I believe those are most of the announcements. Also, a brief mention, if you can please fill out the blue book at the end of the pew and pass it on down, that would be super, and return it back to its spot. Is there anything that I may have overlooked at this time that needs to be mentioned? Well, today we are the second week in Trinity, uh, as you can tell, with the pyramids changing to green. And we encounter a parable today, this great banquet, a parable of invitation, this parable of inv invitation of coming. We're going to hear more about that invitation in the sermon here this morning, as well as our readings. But before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 904, hymn number 904. Continue on the top of 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, 
I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro, printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C.
pray. O Lord, since you never fail to help and govern those whom you nurture in your steadfast fear and love, work in us a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest place in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is in sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods, the world's goods, and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. When one of those who reclined at table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, 
God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 622, hymn number 622.
In the name of Jesus. Amen. The master of the great banquet, he invited people not once, but twice. First time he announced that there was a banquet, and the second time that he invited them was on that very great day when everything was ready. He sent out a special messenger to announce, indeed to announce that everything was ready. Come on in, the food's on the table. Come, it's ready for you. Now what this teaches you and me about this Christian faith is that this Christian faith is one great invitation. One big invitation. It just is about coming. Keep in mind, though, that this invitation is not so much a command as if the Lord God is saying, get in here, sit down right now. Rather, instead, it's an offer. It's a gift. It's an invitation to share in the gifts of the kingdom of God. In other words, come. God is expecting you. Come indeed. Everything is ready. You do not need to bring anything. You do not need to prepare anything or do anything. It's just ready. It's simply done. It's ready for you. Come, receive, partake. You see, as a shepherd seeks for the lost sheep, as a woman gets down on her knees and looks through the dirt for a lost coin, and yes, as a father seeks out for the lost prodigal son, waiting for the son to come home, the same is for the Lord himself. For the sake of humanity, he seeks. God is always seeking. He's always calling. He's always inviting us unto himself. About 1,600 years ago, a Christian in ancient Turkey, a Christian pastor, he said this to his parishioners. He said the following in a sermon pertaining to this text here today, this parable, if you will. Come you all, enter into the joy of your Lord. The table is richly loaded. Enjoy its royal banquet. The calf is a fatted one. Let no one go away hungry. All of you enjoy the faith of the banquet. All of you receive the riches of his goodness. Let no one grieve over their poverty, for the kingdom has been revealed. Let no one weep over their sin, for pardon has shone forth from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of the Savior has set us free. Ah, good stuff. Dear friends, it is important to understand that Christianity is not, first and foremost, a should kind of religion. It is first and foremost, rather, a come kind of religion. In other words, what builds the church and sustains the church is, yes, the invitation. Is that invitation of the gospel, the gospel itself. It's not necessarily the thou shalt and the thou shalt not. Now, please do not misunderstand. The law is indeed good, right, and salutary. The law is important as it reveals our sin, as it shows us the work of our depravity. But it is only the gospel that creates faith, faith itself. It is only the gospel that indeed creates faith. It is only the gospel itself that forgives and sustains the church. That is why we are often invited to come unto the Lord. Come and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come and receive the forgiveness of sins. Come, receive his gifts. The pastor from long ago, he also told his parishioners in ancient Turkey the following. He went on to say this to them. The Lord's invitation is one of kindness. His goodness is beyond description. Come to me all, not only rulers, but also their subjects. Not only the rich, but also the poor. Not only the free, but also the slaves. Not only men, but also women. Not only the youth, but also the old. Not only those who have sound body, but also the crippled. All of you, he says, come. All of you. For such are the master's gifts. He knows no distinction of slave and free, of rich and poor. But all such inequality is cast aside. Come, he says, all of you who labor and are burdened, and see whom he calls. Those who have spent their strength in breaking the law, those who are burdened with their sins, those who can no longer lift up their heads, those who are filled with shame, those who can no longer speak out. Why does he call them? Not to demand an account, nor hold a court of judgment to them. But why? Well, to relieve them. To relieve them of their pain. To take away their heavy burden. Come. We should also pause a moment and understand that when Jesus says, Come, 
He does not stand at the top of a high ladder, per se, looking down upon us from heaven, waving for us to come on upward up that ladder, to start climbing. Come on now, get climbing. Jesus, he's also not running away from us, as if he's on some sort of diligent path to heaven, calling us to come, to hurry up and catch up to him, that we have to pursue him. We better keep up or we might lose him. No. Jesus himself has climbed all the way down, all the way down the ladder to come right before you and me. He came down from heaven and he was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and he was made man. He came by being born in a manger to us. He came and he died on the cross for us. He came to prepare the banquet of salvation for us. And now today, he sends his servants to extend his invitation, his invitation yet again. Come, for all things are now ready. There's nothing you can add to this feast. There's nothing you can bring to this feast. It is all done. It's been prepared for you. It is all for you. Come. But this is where the hiccup comes in. As you and I know from this parable, mankind often hears this great invitation and finds something better else to do, something else better to do. I bought a field. I bought five yokes of oxen. I have married a wife. Yada, yada, yada. I cannot come. I have excuses. Have me excused. This was the response. Is it not the same today in our day and age? Dear friends, the great tragedy is that we end up accepting the wrong invitations in life. You see, the world comes along and the world dangles all these great invitations with promises to boot for us. And so we'd rather attend these invitations. And so we miss the banquet of Christ. And we settle for the lesser things in life. Empty things, hollow things, things that do not last. This is the reason why our Christ Jesus, why he laments. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, how often I ached to embrace you. The way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you, yeah, you would not let me. And yet Jesus still invites. The invitation continues to go out in season and out of season. People will reject, they'll neglect and they'll scorn the church as old-fashioned or out of touch. Nonetheless, the invitation will continue to go out to everyone. It goes out to all of those who are on the back streets, to those who live in dirty little places, to those who live also in fine houses. Come. The good news is that you do not have to be perfect, though, to come. Come as you are with all of your sins, with all of your sorrows, with all of your weaknesses and failures and problems and anxieties and guilt and shame. Come to the only one who can forgive you of all of your sins to heal you, to grant you assurance and a conscience at peace. Come to the one who on his cross opened his arms wide to you. Come for now is all ready. Keep in mind, though, that coming to Jesus isn't just a one-time thing. No one can say, oh, I did that once upon a time. I'm good to go. Or I came to that church service on Christmas once upon a time. No coming to Jesus is a way of life. It begins with baptism. It continues as we live in our baptisms with repentance and faith. It continues as we come to the sanctuary each and every Sunday, each and every week to receive the holy absolution, to receive the body and blood of Christ upon our tongues and into our bellies. You see, he who came down from heaven to meet us on our level, he still is with us on our level. Baptized saints, Jesus does not stand at the top of the ladder. He does not stand at the top of the ladder calling us home, but rather he comes down the ladder below you and me, and he lifts us up on his strong shoulders, and he carries us up the ladder himself. And so today, right now, right here, let us be bold this day to admit our lame excuses for not coming to the great banquet regularly. Let us not play the old Adam games with silly justifications for neglecting the great invitation. But instead, let us lay aside the excuses. May our sinful excuses be crucified unto Christ as we simply receive with empty hands all that he has already done for you and for me. 
Yes, come to him today and tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. Come for all is ready for you. Come indeed, you who are puzzled and seek meaning for life. Come you who are confused and want an identity. Come you who have failed marriages. Come you who have stumbled and fallen because of the laziness of your life. Come you who want to pull the covers over your heads because of your sexual guilt. Come you who are anxious and fearful of life. Come you who mourn and weep with sorrow over an abortion. Come you who struggle with anger and gossiping tongue. Come one and all. Everything is ready for you. Come. Baptized saints, never stop coming. Because the Lord never stops inviting and never stops forgiving. In Christ, as we hear time and time again, there's more forgiveness and grace in Christ than there is sin in you. So we come and we respond and we hear that invitation. Come, those, who, those of you who are blessed, take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. Come, it is all ready for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the offertory. may be suited for the offering. Music is a way of reminder of the offering pages at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed in the church office or conducted through the church website online. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brendan and Teresa, Keegan and Cassidy to come forward, please, at this time, for reception of membership. It's Keegan right here, Brendan right here. As a way of introduction, uh, Cassidy and Teresa are transferring in from other LCMS churches in North Dakota, and they are dragging Keegan and Brendan with. That's the way of saying it. But we rejoice in receiving you, Brendan and Keegan, into membership here at St. Paul's today. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Brendan and Keegan, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all of his works and all of his ways? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? 
Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even unto death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? Will you support the work of our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that the Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God bless you, Brandon. God bless Keegan. You guys may be seated. I ask our congregation to please remain standing for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, by your word and spirit, give us a fear and knowledge of you. Set us on the way of wisdom and insight that we may love you, love you for your law's reproof and grow wiser still in the wisdom of your gospel and its righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all who govern the nation in your stead. Keep their lips from speaking deceit. Turn them from evil. Cause them to do good. And help them seek peace and pursue it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we lift before you the many afflictions of our brothers and sisters. We pray this morning, especially for Brenda, Brittany and Jeremy, Brian, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Daniel, Don, Fern, George, Isabella, Jameson, Jeff, Joellen, Callie, Karen, Manny, Marilyn, Mark, Pat, Philip, Priscilla, Randy, Robert, Roger, Ruth, Suzanne, Tim, Tracy, and Travis. We also pray for the family of Ed Rudder as he was recently called to glory. For the sake of your righteous son, hear their cries and help and deliver them out of all of their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, since you have made us fellow citizens with all the saints through the blood of Christ, help us not look upon anyone in our midst as a stranger or an alien, but embrace them instead as fellow members of your household. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For you, for to you alone, we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. 
If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod or one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward to kneel and cross your arms at the altar to receive a blessing this day. If you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, our Lord and trusting in his promises we are bold to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he's betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Ask the congregation to please stand for the Nuncta Minutes on 199. Thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May we see if our departing hymn, hymn number 655. Before we depart, just a special welcome to Brendan and Keegan in membership today. So Lord bless and keep both of you guys, as well as Cassidy and Teresa as well. As we leave today, we hear that gracious invitation to come, not as some sort of burden, but something as an invitation, a gracious invitation, because the Lord keeps on giving. The feast is prepared. All is done for you. Come, receive. You have received. Continue to receive. For the Christ, our Christ, keeps on giving to us. In his name, amen. <laughs>